Welcome back to another episode of the Azure Enablement Show. Today, we're going to talk about how customers can save on cost and increase their SQL license utilization in the Azure Hybrid Benefit using the centrally managed Azure Hybrid Benefit for SQL Server. Welcome back. My name is Thomas, and I'm here with Chris and Kyle to talk about how customers can save on costs and increase their SQL license utilization in the Azure Hybrid Benefit using the centrally managed Azure Hybrid Benefit for SQL Server. So great to have you both here today and talk about this. Um, mm -hmm. For people who haven't really or doesn't don't really know about the Azure Hybrid Benefit, Kyle, can you tell us a little bit more what that is? Yes, Thomas, I can. So Azure Hybrid Benefit, it's a licensing offer that's designed to help our customers save on their Azure cost. The way it works is when a customer applies their existing Windows Server or SQL Server license to an Azure resource, like a virtual machine or a SQL database, using the Azure Hybrid Benefit, the software, the software cost is removed and the customer is essentially only paying for the compute cost. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so obviously this is not something new. The Azure hybrid benefit exists for quite a while. Um, can you tell me a little bit what the current limitations were so far? Yes. Yeah, so we've heard from our customers and, you know, they love the cost savings to get with Azure hybrid benefit, but there's two problems that they, uh, they encounter in the current process. One, it's difficult and time consuming to track your license utilization when it's applied at the resource level. It's especially difficult for customers who have a, who operate at a large scale. The second issue that customers see is that the DevOps roles who are applying um, Azure Hybrid Benefit or SQL Server to Azure Hybrid Benefit, they could be unintentionally applying licenses that they don't have already. So they could be over committing to licenses that they don't that they don't have purchased, and that can lead to non-compliance issues. And that makes sense, yes, especially in this like dynamic cloud world where you spin up resources and then remove them. It's hard to uh, keep track of licenses in those times. So obviously, you are here to share some improvements. So uh, how do we solve these challenges? Yes, yeah, so we're definitely excited to talk about centrally managed Azure Hybrid Benefit for SQL Server. And this new feature is going to help solve those two problems we just talked about. With centrally managed Azure Hybrid Benefit for SQL Server, customers can now apply their licenses at the subscription or account level, which, which will help increase their license utilization and therefore increase their cost optimization through Azure Hybrid Benefit. The second um, feature within centrally managed Azure Hybrid Benefit is it limits the number of roles can actually apply those SQL Server licenses to Azure Hybrid Benefit. With this limited, uh, with this limited um, uh, number of people who can do it, the intention is that role is going to have more visibility and transparency into the licenses that are available to actually apply to Azure Hybrid Benefit. And that's going to alleviate some of those compliance concerns we talked about before. Fantastic. Thank you, Kyle. So uh, Chris, can you walk us through how to set up the centrally managed Azure Hybrid Benefit for SQL Server in the Azure portal? Absolutely. Uh, so why don't we get started? I'll start with the demo here. Here's the account we'll use. There are two subscriptions in the billing account, one with resources located in East US and another with resources in Southeast Asia. Some resources have Azure Hybrid benefits switched on at the resource level, and some do not. Now let's navigate to the centrally managed Azure Hybrid benefit capability starting on the Azure home screen. From the list of Azure services at the top, the admin will click on cost management plus billing. That will bring them to this summary view. Next, the admin clicks on reservation plus hybrid benefit on the left nav bar. That lends them on a page that will list the reservations and any centralized Azure hybrid benefit license assignments that already exist. Or if there are none, it'll look like this. From there, the admin needs to click on add near the screen's top left and then select Azure hybrid benefit. And the admin then arrives on the landing page for the new centrally managed Azure Hybrid Benefit capability. On this page, there are links to information about the benefit itself and about how the new experience works. There is also a link to an important prerequisite to using the new experience. A customer must go through the process of registering any self-installed SQL virtual machines. 
This step is necessary because it allows you and the system to see all the self-installed SQL Server VMs running in Azure so that sufficient licenses may be centrally assigned to cover them. Once SQL VM registration is done, the admin can click Begin to assign licenses to get started with the new experience. There are just three steps involved to apply your SQL Server licenses. The first step is to choose a scope. The admin either chooses the entire account, including all subscriptions, or they choose one of the subscriptions. The second step is to assign eligible SQL Server standard and enterprise core licenses. There are three options. Click on the first option to keep the same coverage. So assign the same number of licenses centrally as are already in use at a resource level. Click the second option to increase cost savings by covering all eligible SQL resources detected in the environment. Finally, if neither of those clickable options meet the needs or license availability, the admin can customize the number of licenses of each type to assign. With the billing account scope, the admin can click on usage details to see recent Azure Hybrid Benefit license usage to help them decide. The billing account usage details chart shows licenses applied to Azure Hybrid Benefit and the licenses needed to cover the rest of the eligible resources stacked together. So it's easy to see here that 10 standard licenses are needed to cover everything. Click configuration to go back to the main screen. After the coverage is chosen, the third step is for the admin to choose a date to review these license assignments. Likely options include aligning with the agreement renewal date, subscription renewal date, or anniversary date. When all that's done, the admin clicks Add. Here, the customer can create a custom name for each license assignment and then the admin needs to agree to the attestation shown to apply the license assignments. Once the Azure Hybrid Benefit license assignments are active, the admin can return to the Reservations plus Hybrid Benefit screen to see a table that lists them. For each license assignment, the utilization is shown for the last day and last seven days. The admin can also click on a license assignment to see the utilization details. Here's how to think about utilization. If the percentage is less than 100%, that means there are more than enough licenses assigned to cover the resources in the scope. If utilization approaches 100%, the admin should consider assigning additional licenses to make sure they are covering resources and maximizing cost savings from the benefit. And that concludes the demo. Thanks, Chris, for the great demo. So, Kyle, uh, Chris obviously showed us a couple of the benefits of the centrally managed Azure hybrid benefit for SQL Server. Um, can you summarize a little bit and tell us, like, give us an overview of what the other benefits are? Yes, definitely. So when customers use centrally managed Azure hybrid benefit for SQL Server, they're going to see three benefits. The first one is they're going to be able to optimize their savings with the ability to apply their SQL Server licenses at the account or subscription level in Azure Hybrid Benefit. The second one is they're going to see uh, gain confidence and compliance by being able to limit the number of roles who can actually apply to SQL Server licenses to Azure Hybrid Benefit. That's going to give more visibility and transparency in the licenses that are available to apply. And the third one is they're going to be be able to easily track their SQL Server utilization within the environment. With an improved tooling and proactive notifications, their admin role is going to be able to get um, earlier access and early notification when licenses need to be refreshed. Oh, this is awesome. Again, fantastic stuff. So if customers want to learn more about this, uh, where do they go? Yes, so we have a few um, documents and publications that have been published, and you can see them at the bottom of the screen, the links to those. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kyle and Chris, uh, for being on the show today. And also, thank you very much for everyone watching. If you want to learn more about the cloud adoption framework, make sure you check out aka.ms/adopt.